Welcome back to the C2E2 live stage. I am Angelique Roche. I am the host of Sci-Fi Wires Geek Explain, where you can find all the things you love, sci-fi, fantasy, and horror, and everything geeky. And speaking of geeky, <laughs> I'm very excited because there's this little known, I hate to say it, it's not little known, there's this big thing happening at Marvel called War of the Realms. And I have two of the masterminds behind this Marvel-wide event right here on stage. Jason Aaron is looking at me like, I don't know what you mean. Uh, we have a Jason Aaron. I always Aaron. look like that. I mean, I think it's a pretty big deal. And we have Russell Dodderman here on stage with us. Hello. So, War of the Realms. This is a big deal. Everyone's favorite characters from Moon Girl to Blade, obviously Thor. That's a big, from Moon Girl to Blade. It's, it's like it is a big a swath, swath of, of people. Oko Okoye. Like, yeah, yeah. everybody is going to be in this, but this is, it didn't just happen overnight. Not exactly. So, talk to me, Jason. <laughs> this has been, this, did you sit there one day and you're like, you know, there are a lot of realms. Yeah. What if all the realms were in peril at the same time and everyone had to work together and I want frost giants and angels. Lots of frost giants. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, kinda. I mean, I, I started writing Thor seven years ago, mm -hmm. right? When I got the job, I didn't, I didn't know the realms. I didn't know where the dwarfs lived or the elves lived, right? It was all very confusing. So the first thing I wanted to do was figure that out, memorize the realms, and as I read the books, you know, a lot of Thor comics over the years, the books weren't consistent as to what those realms looked like and who lived there. Were they good guys or bad guys? So. To me, that was important. That's part of what makes Thor different than all the other characters in the Marvel Universe, right? Like mm -hmm. Spider-Man patrols the five boroughs of New York. Thor patrols 10 realms, right? Like 10 crazy fantasy realms. So I wanted to do a story that would do world building and tell us what those realms were like. So what better way to do that than do a war that would set them all on fire and murder millions of people? And you're also one of the very few people who can list off all of the realms. I can't, well, yeah, I should be able to, right? After I mean, the, the, I mean, it's kind of your years, job. After seven years of destroying them all, we should be <laughs> able to list them all. So, yes. And then I made Rissel help me do this murderous rampage. Yeah, because, you know, the great thing about comic books is that it's not just about a good story. It's about how do you go in and tell that story through art, through paneling, and how those work together. How has it been particularly with your background, doing other types of illustration, other types of work, how has that prepped you for this behemoth of an event? Yeah, well, I started out um, working in costume design, and that's what I went to school for, and I started out doing um, illustrations for costume designers on movies and things, mm -hmm. and then moved into comics, but that's really helped because as we've gone through all the realms over the past four or five years that we've been doing this, there have been a lot of things that hadn't been designed yet or had been designed that were due for a redesign, you know? So I've been doing everything from costumes for warrior angels to fire demons to frost giants, and I really got to play and really go all out with those designs, which has been really fun for me. No, it sounds like it's heck of fun. Lots of maps. You've drawn lots oh, yeah. and lots of maps. We did a lot of um, Lord of the Rings, Tolkien-esque maps to show all the different realms that was really fun to draw to. How do you even start with cartography of ten <laughs> realms? Well, that started with Jason. I mean, he gave a very detailed description of the map, and then I just needed to come up with iconography to kind of fit into that fantasy vibe and kind of make it sing a little. What I love is that at this point at War of the Realms, which comes out next month, uh, April yeah. 3rd. Yep. Yep, really soon. Um, for those who are interested in figuring out the backstory to a lot of this, you can check out the Prelude, which came out March 13th, uh, which has a lot of the dope original work of where Malekith came from. Yeah, I think it's got, it's got uh, Simonson issues mm -hmm. and maybe some Kirby stuff. It's got uh, stories from all different eras of, of Thor comics, stories about all the different realms, and then some of the stuff we've done more recently kind of everything you need to know to, to lead into War of the Realms. Even though this has been building for seven years, you don't have to have been reading the last seven years worth of comics to, yeah. to understand it. You can pick up that trade and it'll give you a lot of background. 
You can also just go out and pick up War of the Realms number one and everything you need to know should be in those pages. That was the exact question I was going to ask. For someone who hasn't been reading, um, you know, all of the different characters, because it is, this is bringing a lot of our favorites, but also a lot of characters whose, you know, actual page life started decades ago. And these are stories that have continued to go through. Where would you suggest they start, but? Yeah, the page one of War of the Realms number one. You know, if we've done our job proper, properly, everything you need should be right there. Um, and it starts with a great uh, Russell Dowderman two-page map. So you get another map showing all the realms. And, um, you know, it, it follows after a lot of the stuff we were doing in Thor, but yeah. it brings in so many other Marvel characters, everyone from the Avengers to Punisher to Wolverine, um, Captain Marvel, Spider-Man, so many. That, yeah. And they have no idea, you know, what's been going on either. So they're playing catch up in the story too. So yeah. it's a jumping on point for them and it can be a jumping on point for readers too. Which is pretty amazing because we're here. We're at the last realm. We are the last realm standing. Midgard. Yeah, this war has been going through all of them and messing them all up. And we're the last one and the fight explodes here. So it, it had kind of started as a Thor story, but when, it, when everything explodes in, in, you know, down in midtown Manhattan, Thor is nowhere to be found. Like, there's no Thor to, to fight this fight. So that's when all the other Marvel heroes have to team up to, to fight the fight and figure out where did Thor go? What happened to Thor? So I know you can't pick favorites because favorites are very Oh, hard. I totally can. Why can't well, I? Well, I guess you can pick favorites. If there's a favorite thing that you're just like ready, because, because this is, y'all have been cooking this up for, almost a decade what are what is like the thing you are so excited for readers to be able to see from this story because i know there's things that you're like i can't wait till we That's get to question. x i literally like five things popped into my head and i can't tell you any of them because <laughs> they'd all be spoilers but um are they like what issue are they in well there's one in the first issue that involves a big sound effect in the background yeah, sure um that i'm very excited for people to so read. many secrets uh, well, I mean, the, the one non-spoiler thing I can say was um, just seeing Russell get to draw all these characters I hadn't seen him draw before. So I, I knew the first time, the first Spider-Man page I wrote in that, I was so excited to see what Russell would do with that. There was a big Fantastic Four moment, and I was excited about that one. Yeah, there's, I think, uh, issue three, there's a big splash page that's all Fantastic Four fighting against all these fantasy creatures, and that was a real treat. Like, I hadn't drawn them probably since I was a kid, so that was yeah. really fun. Well, well, and if, oh, go ahead. I would say that's the cool part of my job, is I get to work with an awesome artist and think up stuff and make him draw it. Do you, do you literally sit there and go, all right, what can I challenge Russell with today? I'm it sure gonna... seems like he does. <laughs> <laughs> well, you may not be able to answer your favorite thing that you want people, but is there like a particular achievement, a challenge that, you know, had set out clearly, obviously bringing all these characters together being a huge challenge, but for you as an artist, do you feel like there's something you're like, oh man, I did this thing and it's done and it's great. Well, you know, before I got hired at Marvel, I was reading Jason's um, Thor God of Thunder run, and that was my favorite book. And um, to be asked to, you know, follow that up with our Jane Foster Thor run, and then later to be continuing this and the thing he's been building towards since he started that run, that's really, really huge for me. And I couldn't be more excited to be drawing that and working with him. And we, we, you do see Jane in this. We can say she's in the promo image. Um, you know, she's got hair again after she's been going through chemotherapy, so. And she's, um, she's a little healthier now and she's fighting on her own. Like she picks up a sword and gets in the fight and that's really fun to draw. And I, I think that's what brings us kind of all into comics is these moments where you see our heroes come back time and time and time again to fight. You know, for those out there who are getting into your work, who may be longtime fans or may just be picking up War of the Realms on April 3rd, you know, how did you get into comics? Like, why? Like, you, you obviously have worked in many different fields. You are a writer across the board. You know, how did you get into comics originally? Like, as a, as a fan? Like, as a reader? As just a, as a fan. As a professional? 
Um, you know, the spinner rack at the drugstore when I was a kid. My mom buying me comics. I think before I could even read, I pretty much learned to read from comics. And I, I've never stopped. I never, you know, it's not like I, I got to an age where I drifted away from comics and came back. I've been reading comics my whole life. And if you don't believe me, come see my basement sometime. <laughs> it's full of long boxes, much to my wife's dismay. I t now it's tax deductible, so it's a work expense. And it's research. I, it absolutely yeah. it's my research library so i've always been reading comics and pretty much pretty quickly like knew i wanted to do that for a living yeah. just took me you know a long time to get there well we're glad you got there what about you russell i started with uh, x-men the animated series if anybody's a fan of that um i actually like when i was trying to break in and get hired at marvel i did a piece of fan art that was the x-men from that team in all those 90s costumes and some marvel and dc editors saw that and that's how i got hired eventually so it kind of came full circle with getting into comics and getting hired at marvel x-men brought a lot of folks in so yes so i i gotta ask there's been a teaser there was an announcement that happened at c2e2 uh about another piece of art uh, that I hear there's going to be a veiled in a Is it true, Jason Aaron, that you have a War of the Realms tattoo? That is true. That is true. Uh, Ryan Panagos from Marvel and I went out into the wilds of Brooklyn and got... I hear Brooklyn is wild. It is wild. And we got War of the Realms symbols tattooed on our bodies. Um, and I guess you'll have to go to marvel.com to sort of see more of that. I'm not allowed to like just take my shirt off, right? I shouldn't do that. I, uh, probably not. Probably not. I think, <laughs> I think that's that. on the list of things you shouldn't do. But there are a lot of people now out there going, where is this tattoo and what does it look like? Uh, you'll see it soon if you haven't already, I think online. Um, it's yeah. just right here. It's right there? Yeah. Well, you're going to have to make sure you check out that, the prelude that came out March 13th. And make sure you're checking out War of the Realms, issue one, April 3rd, everywhere you buy comic books, uh, which also means digitally and online. So thank you both very, very much. And y'all are both signing. You're both here. Yeah, we're both in Artist Alley, right next to each other. Awesome. Well, make sure all of y'all at home are following along with the conversation. If you have questions for Russell and Aaron, hashtag C2E2, hashtag it's a fan thing. And make sure you are staying tuned because we are going to have another amazing panel coming up that is going to be hosted by Karima, the Blurred Girl. And yeah, no, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you.